morning, good morning. It's nice to see you. Good morning, good morning to you. Well, here I am again with my second Bible study. Didn't know if I'd uh, actually do it, but I'm doing it. Uh, I even found a prayer shawl that someone had made for me. It's pretty long. And I thought, you know, I'll use all the help that I can get. <laughs> I even put, so Holy Spirit, be with me as I share the Word of God. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Okay, so that's what my Bible study is going to be about. In Deuteronomy 4.1, it says, Now, therefore, hearken, or listen, or hear, O Israel, unto the statutes, which are decrees, and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, doing them, that ye may live. And I say live well on earth and very well in heaven. And go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So when I read that, possessing the land, well, of course, yes, if we're blessed and we're doing what we should be doing with our money and the things that God gives to us, then we are possessing the land which our home sits on, or we're possessing the land where our church is. But most of all, we want to possess the land in heaven. And so to do that, we have to listen, number one. We have to observe and we have to live the best we can. Now, uh, there's actually two kinds of models that we can choose. The first one, of course, is uh, wanting to have good body, physical health. Yes, that's a good thing. Uh, but we also want a good spiritual health. When we think about our bodies, uh, of course, we need to know that we need to eat well. We need to stay away from processed foods and fried foods as much as possible. Uh, we know that exercising is good for our body, but we also know that we need to have balance because I'll take Jane Fonda, for example, who exercised her whole life, worried about her physical frame her whole life, uh, I, really, I think it was for a while she even was doing the, uh, you know, down the throat thing and getting rid of her food. She made money with her exercise videos. Yeah. And in the end, what happened? She had two knee replacements. And I know she had at least one knee and possibly two. So even Jane Fonda realized that her spiritual health was more important than the physical health. Yes, we want to look our best because we want to represent the Lord in all aspects of our life. But I love what she said on her quote, we're not meant to be perfect, we're meant to be whole. I mean two hip replacements. So the only way we can really be spiritually whole is to feed on God's word, the Bible. Inspired by God, to the twelve apostles who the Lord started the earthly church with, as Peter being the leader. Okay, now having said that, when we get to the spiritual side of our well-being, we know that when we read the Word, that it will give us uh, spiritual nourishment. And that nourishment keeps us from committing uh, the same sins over and over again. You know, you only really need to read the Word about five minutes. If you can do it every day, that'd be great. What a fantastic way to start the day. And that's what I try to do. 
even if I'm in a hurry, it seems like my Bible is calling me. Now, I've got this little case that I carry my Bible in, and it says D-A-W-G, dog. But what does that mean? I'm doing all right with God. <laughs> that was given to me a long time ago, too. So there's two great benefits when you read the Word in the morning. You set your mind straight. And the Word says, you know, to put on the mind of Christ. Uh, and I can find that. Well, I'll give you one scripture here. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 2.16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So that's what you get when you read the Word. It's a transforming thing that happens just with five minutes a day, if that's all you have. And you know, it's been said that it's good to baptize your babies, you know, within maybe two weeks, uh, if possible, because the Holy Spirit is the one who comes into your heart and transforms your life. So baptism is a very important thing. And if you've never been baptized, you can be baptized at any time. You can be baptized on your deathbed if that's when it hits you to do it, or the Holy Spirit instructs you to do it. You can do it as a young adult. You can do it as a senior uh, teenager. So uh, it's a very good thing. And let me show you in Acts 2.38 what it says about baptism. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Now repent just means to turn away from your sin. And, and, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now the Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. Uh, the most important element in our life now, because when Jesus left to be with the Father in heaven, after his resurrection on the third day, of being buried in the tomb, uh, he promised to leave us a helper, a comforter. Those are another two names for the Holy Spirit. And you can find that yourself in the Word of God. It's in John 14, 26. Verse 26 in John chapter 14. And this is Jesus saying this. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send you in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whosoever I have, whatsoever I have said unto you. And what I like about that scripture is you know, sometimes we want to talk about the Lord to people, and we're wondering, oh, I won't remember anything. But it's a funny thing. Once you do start talking about the Lord from the Word of God, uh, the Holy Spirit does bring to your mind certain things that pertain to the person you're talking to to help you uh, to get them to know the Lord. And isn't that a beautiful thing? Uh, once again, that's why we're here. Number one, to love God with all our hearts, all our mind, and all our soul. I don't have the scripture for that, but I should have. And uh, so there you have it. We are the ambassadors of Christ. Now, I guess this could be just a little bit of a warning right here, because once you have repented, turned away from your sin, and you've been baptized to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and your mind gets transformed, your thinking and your lifestyle and uh, things that come out of your mouth, because those are probably the worst sins, you know, the sin of gossip and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so you want to be careful not to go backwards. Uh, some people call it backsliding. And we're human, and occasionally we will, but that's what is so great about uh, believing in the Lord is that he always forgives you. The Father 
knows that we're just like little children. We're going to make mistakes all the time, and we're even going to test him sometimes. But uh, he is faithful. So we must, you know, learn to obey his voice. Now, if you go to Jeremiah 7, 23, this is what it says about obeying. Uh, but this thing I commanded I to them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you, and I say, that it may be well in your soul. And you know, it's one thing to turn our face away from the Lord, you know, when we don't want to listen sometimes, but it's a whole other thing when you actually turn your back on him and walk away. And especially if you've been a believer and you do that, like Judas, or like the disciples in John 6, 66. Uh, his disciples had seen everything, had heard everything, and when Jesus spoke one thing about his body and blood and the importance of eating and drinking it, uh, they turned away from him and walked away. They turned their back on him. So be very careful. There's a difference of turning your face and turning your back and walking away. And well, I might as well read that scripture, John 6, 66. And this is when he was teaching in Capernaum. Uh, I'll start at 65. And he said, Jesus, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Many of his disciples didn't walk with him anymore. How sad. And then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will you also walk away? And Peter answered the Lord and said to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Six, John 66, 67, and 68. So that's uh, my little Bible study. It uh, just reminds us to Try to hear the word of God, try to observe, obey the word of God, and live the word of God. Not only here on earth, but to get to heaven. You know we're all saints in, in, in the making, right? And it's a gradual process. So uh, won't you ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart today? It's so important. And if you haven't been baptized, do that too. I know I'm always blessed if I go to a church and men are, grown men are there uh, getting baptized. It's just so attractive and so humbling, I'm sure, for them. And it humbles me to watch them. So uh, I'm going to end it right there. And uh, I just say, Lord, thank you for your faithful words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now may, the, now may his strength fill you, may your mind be transformed, and may the Holy Spirit fill you with all his nutrients. In the name of Jesus, I say these things. Amen. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Here's a scripture on, scripture on loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. Matthew 22, 37.